Now in part B, we're told that this particle moves under the action of a constant force F and we've got to find that force F in the form Ai plus Bj. But to do this, what we are also told is that after five seconds, this particle is moving with a velocity of 7i plus 10j. Seven units this way, 10 units up. So for it to do something like this, to start off going in this direction and then end up going in that direction, strikes me that it's following some kind of path, something like this. It starts out going in that direction and then it moves round to be something like this. So this particle after five seconds has got to be moving in this direction along this path. So I see it as moving, say, somewhere like that. This would be a tangent to the path. Now I'm not suggesting it's going to be exactly here, but it's just to give you an idea. So for that particle to move along this path, there must have been a force then F acting on the particle trying to push it off course. And if I put that particle on, say there, the particle as it moves round this curve, okay, the force F is always trying to push inwards to try and push it back onto this course. So we've got to find out what this force F is. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we should know is that force equals mass times acceleration. And we're dealing with vector quantities here. So we've got F, I've underlined this because we normally would see it in bold print. F equals the mass times acceleration. F is a vector quantity, A is a vector quantity, M is a scalar quantity. Now, in order to find out what F is, I know M, but I don't know what A is, the acceleration. And that's our starting point. We can get what A is. We can get what A is because we should know that acceleration as a vector quantity is the change in velocity. In other words, V minus U all divided by T. If you were to multiply both sides by T and add U, you'll get the familiar equation V equals U plus AT. Anyway, so we've got to get A. Well, we know the final velocity after five seconds. It's here, 7i plus 10j. So we can fill this in as V as being 7i plus 10j. I could write that in brackets if I wanted to, but there's no need to. Uh, but I do need to write this in brackets, minus u. u being 2i minus 5j. 2i minus 5j. And then this is all divided by the time interval, which was five seconds. So if we clean this up, we've got 7i minus 2i, so that's going to be 5i. And then we've got 10j here, minus minus 5j, so it's going to be 15j. And that's all divided by the five. And 5 goes into that nicely, into both those terms there, so you end up with i plus 3j. So that's the acceleration. We've got our a part. It's easy now to get what f is. We know that f equals ma. m is 2 kilograms. So therefore, we can say that f equals the mass 2 times the acceleration, i plus 3j. And therefore, if we just open this up, expand the bracket, we get 2i plus 6j. And there's your force F in the form ai plus bj. All right.